and welcome to Mrs Patnell's Maths Lesson 4 of this week. We are still looking at the theme of money and using the language to do with money and recognising the coins and the different value of those coins. Uh, Teddy's here to join me again today. Poor little nameless Teddy, still hasn't got a name, but he's decided to sit in on maths as well because he said phonics was so exciting, he's going to join us for maths. Okay, number of the day chart today. I'm going to get a little bit more trickier now because I'm going to ask you to either do number 11 or number 21. So we're reaching into the teens and the 20s with this today. So number 11 or number 21. It's up to you what you do on your number of the day board today. We are going to do some counting as well. So I've got my trusty 100 square here. So I think we are going to count in tens to 200 today. So let's sit Teddy here so he can see what's going on. So counting in tens to 200. Are you ready? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I'm going to come back up to the top again, but just put 100 in front. 100 and 10, 100 and 20, 100 and 30, 100 and 40, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, that won't be 100 again, it will be 200, 200 at that point when we've reached 190. Let's do some counting backwards, I think we're going to start from 30 and count all the way back to what would be here is zero and you can say blast off as well if you want to 30 29 28 27 26 25 24 23 22 21 back on the end of this line 20 19 18 17 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off! Excellent counting. I am going to set you another challenge for when this video is finished. I wonder if without your 100 square, so flip it over so you can't see it, have a go at counting in tens, just to 100 if you want. You can stop at 100, but with your eyes closed or turning your 100 square over. So that's your challenge, counting in tens without the 100 square to help you. See how you go with that. Pop it on tapestry if you're in my class. Let an adult tell you how fabulous you are if you're not in my class and you're at home doing it there. Okay, now we're going to have a quick look at the months of the year. We don't want to go forgetting those for our time topic. So here we are, we have them there. I hope you can see them all on the camera. And we are going to sing our song to go with the 12 months of the year. January, February, March and April, May, June, July and August, September, October, November, December, these are the months of the year. Now, we are now in May when you're watching this video. I'm filming it in April but I know by the time you watch it, it will be May. So we'll have moved on to a new month of May. Right, let's pop this down over here. So, carrying on with our coin recognition, hopefully you've had a chance to have a role play session with your uh, flapjacks. If you didn't get a chance to bake some yourself, maybe you made some out of cardboard or something, or even Play-Doh maybe, and you opened up your own flapjack shop, and you've been selling those to your family and working out how much they need to pay in total and um, what coins they can use to pay for it with. Now we're going to do a nice little short session today because I've kept you busy for a lot of the week. So I'm going to have my little whiteboard here 
and I'm going to take a coin and I'm going to pop it up so it's just peeking out of the whiteboard. I'll bring it a little closer in a second. And I want you to yell out at the screen which coin you think I am holding up behind my board, okay? Now let's just have a little brief reminder because we, uh, we might have forgotten a little bit about the, uh, what the features of these coins and what they look like, okay? So remember that a 1p, a 1p, if I bring it forward, is the small copper one, okay, circular shaped. A 2p, slightly bigger copper coin, but circular shaped, okay. 5p, teeny weeny little silver circle one. 10p, mm, much bigger there, look at that. Silver in colour, but bigger than the 5p, but still a circle. And then we've got our 20p, which had seven sides, remember, but still silver but smaller than a 10p, as you can see. 10p pokes out around the sides. And then we had a 50 pence. Seven sides as well, and silver like the 20p, but much bigger compared to our 20 pence piece, okay? So keep that in mind when I poke up some coins behind my board, and that is going to help you call out which coin I am showing, so you can instantly recognise these coins, okay? So here is my board, and I'm going to choose one of these coins and poke it up, and you're going to yell out what coin I am showing. So, first of all, I'm going to show you the tip of this coin here. Can you see it? Let me bring it a little closer, just in case. There is that coin there, okay? Now you can see its colour. You can see what shape it is, even though you've only got half of the coin peeping out, you can work out what shape that coin is, okay? You've got to start thinking about what size it looks like. Now, I know it's not got the other one with it to compare, but you've got to think, hmm, does that look large or small? And yell out to this camera what you think it is. It is a 2p, okay? Pat yourself on the back if you got the 2p correct. Well done. Right, the next one I'm going to show is, let's bring this to the camera. Oh, look at that. It is, although only half the coin is showing, it's a circular shape, okay? It is silver in colour. And does it look big or small? It's kind of bigger, isn't it? So it must be silver, circular, bigger, a 10p, a 10 pence. Right, let's try this one next, sliding it up to the top of the board. Oh, now, half of this is poking out, but we can see, hopefully you can, that it's not quite circular. There are some sort of straight sides to that coin. And does it look really big or does it look kind of small? So it's silver, it has straight sides, and it looks quite, I'd say, smaller. So it must be a 20 pence coin. Well done if you got that right. Pat yourself on the back. Let's go with this one now. You can see that it is copper coloured. It is indeed a circle, but it looks quite small. Small circular copper coin must be a one penny, a one pence. Fabulous if you got that right. Let's try this one. This one is popping up. Oh, it's a silver coin. It has some straight edges, but it looks quite big. Silver, straight edges and quite big. It's a 50 pence coin. Absolutely well done if you got that one. And sliding up this one. It is, oh, it's quite small, but looks circular. And what colour is it? It's silver. Small, silver and circular, a circle shape. It is a five pence. Well done if you got that right as well. That's Fantastic! Now let's see if you can remember these two from right at the beginning of the week, okay? I'm going to poke this one up here. 
Now remember we're not talking pence here anymore because we've seen all the pence coins or the penny coins. So what are we talking about now? We can see, or hopefully you can see, that it is silver in the middle and gold around the outside, but it looks quite big. So which coin is that? Gold around the edge, silver in the middle, but quite big. And a perfect circle, it's worth pointing out. No straight edges around the, the edge there. It is, and hopefully you've remembered this, it is a two pound coin. Remember when we looked at pounds at the beginning of the week? It is a two pound coin worth two one pound coins okay which must mean that our last one here on the table is a one pound coin also gold around the edge silver in the middle but you have to feel this one really straight edges around the outside but remember the difference between those two one is much bigger one is smaller and has those straighter edges so the two pound coin and the one pound coin remember that a one pound coin is worth how many one pennies it's worth 101 pennies. Well done if you remember that. Okay, that's the end of today's lesson. A nice quick one for you, but it's all helping you recognise those coins and their values. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.